here to give us his take is James Kwok. He's the co-founder of the Baseline Scenario blog and the co-author of 13 Bankers, The Wall Street Takeover and the Next Financial Meltdown. James, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. Well, let's talk about this report, the Keybridge report that a number of people have referred to now it, within the media. It's quite controversial, but this recently released report says that the margin and the collateral requirements outlined in Title VII could mean the loss of upwards of 130,000 jobs and would also reduce capital spending by companies. This is the S&P 500 companies by as much as $6.7 billion. Now, what is your take on the analysis? Well, there are a couple of basic problems with the report, um, which have been pointed out by other people. One of them is that, I mean, it's, this gets a little bit technical, but essentially what they're saying is that big companies are going to have to put up cash in order to head, in order to engage in hedging transactions. And the basic problem with this is that big companies either have they have to put up cash or they have to use up some of the credit because big companies only have access to so much credit and just looking at the cash without looking at the credit is a bit misleading but i think probably the bigger thing to note about this is this is this is the kind of report that we should be expecting to see it's it's basically a report saying that tighter regulation will kill jobs which is essentially the main argument being used by the financial industry, by big users of derivatives, and by Republicans in Congress. So as long as you can say that, um, that well, tighter regulations... Well, let me ask you ahead. this. Let's go back to the Keybridge report for just a moment. The capital and the margin requirements, as outlined in Title VII, that would mean more cash. And, and this is for derivatives use. That really isn't about... This is not speculation. This is really about hedging sort of the cost of doing business or the uh, or the risks that they undertake in doing business so in s p 500 companies you can see we have here this is a pie chart that comes out of the keybridge research report that talks about the major concerns as it relates to these s p 500 companies and and really what they're doing is you know the majority of these are in interest rate derivatives we also have foreign exchange as well as um, hedging for against commodities pricing volatility and it seems like we would want these companies to be able to use these types of derivatives in order to keep their earnings streams less volatile. Yeah, I actually agree with that, and that's been written into the Dodd-Frank Act. So the Dodd-Frank Act does have a general exemption for valid hedging transactions engaged in by commercial end users. So a lot of the debate right now is about how, how broad that exemption is going to be, because as with a lot of things in Dodd-Frank, the statute lays out some basic principles, and right now the SEC and the CFTC are the two main agencies that are writing the actual rules to implement those. So I completely agree with you on the basic principle that Congress wanted these kinds of valid hedging transactions to be exempted from the law. One point about the capital and margin requirements, though, another point, this is the one brought up by Joe Stiglitz, is that right now U.S. companies are sitting on something like $2 trillion in cash. You know um, what? So James, I'm going to ask yeah. you to hold it right there because I do want to talk about the comment made by Joe Stiglitz in just a moment. Good to have you back, James. We Thanks. had to go into break there, but I did want to continue on with the point um, that Joseph Stiglitz made, I guess, in response to this Keybridge report saying that, why don't you go ahead and say, he was talking about the amount of cash that these companies have on their balance sheets. Yeah, so Stiglitz's point right now is that companies are sitting on a lot of cash right now, which is one reason why unemployment is so high, and that Therefore, it's hard to say that you can't say on the one hand that putting, making them put up cash to cover their derivatives transactions would kill jobs when the companies have the cash right now. But I think, you know, the broader point to be made about this is that let's take as given for a moment that regulation is going to have some kind of uh, constraining effect on the derivatives markets could have some constraining effect on these companies. You have to weigh that against the fact that over-the-counter derivatives did play an important role in the recent financial crisis, which, as we know, eliminated 8 million jobs from the economy. So I think that you have to look at both sides of the argument when you, know, you when are you making the, that kind of decision. When you talk about the over-the-counter derivatives playing a role in the financial crisis, do we know specifically what role they played and how? I mean, it, because the Keybridge re Research Report is really confined not so much to sort of the f financial industry using these types of derivatives. It's really about S&P 500 type companies, sort of end users, which is the expression that's often used to describe non-financial industry players in this market. I mean, so to, what's your assessment on the, the importance of OTC derivatives as it's being used by companies in terms of the financial crisis? Yeah. Well, in terms of the financial crisis, you're right. I mean, the main, the main contributors in terms of OTC derivatives to the crisis were credit default swaps and synthetic CDOs, which are created using credit default swaps. And a lot of this is what 
you know, we would typically call speculation. Um, and I think that a lot of the intention of Congress, a lot of the intention of a lot of well-meaning people is to say, well, we don't want this kind of unbridled speculation because that can cause serious systemic risks in the markets. But at the same time, we want to allow companies to engage in valid hedging transactions. And I think that is a, that is a com completely reasonable point. And you, but you don't agree that the companies or this, this particular research report actually presents a case for not having those margin or capital requirements? I think the research report has some technical flaws. I think the general point it's trying to make is a, is a valid point, which is that uh, overregulation of derivatives would affect industrial companies that, that employ a lot of people. I think at the same time, though, that it's actually difficult. I think there's a gray area in determining what's a valid hedge and what isn't, because if you look at you know, the history of the derivatives market over the past 20 years, a lot of it seems to be investment banks coming up with new exotic kinds of trades and then convincing industrial companies that they are in their best interests to hedge things. So in a sense, we have the banks solving problems that companies didn't know they, they had. And if you go back to Procter & Gamble in Orange County in the early 1990s, that's what happened. So I, my worry is that if we make the exemption for end users too broad, uh, the Wall Street derivatives dealers will try to essentially define as much of their business as possible as end user transactions. Right. So this is, this is a valid point, but a tricky issue. Thank you so much for joining us. This is obviously going to be an ongoing issue, a lot of debate around it. James Kwok joining us today, co-author of 13 Bankers. Well